Hi everyone, today we are going to use Adobe Illustrator to upload your projects to Behance. Let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to be talking about is the file formats for these images. This is on Behance's website and I'm going to link to this in the description. So if you get lost and you want to reference this, by all means click on that link and check this out. So basically the long story short, this project Im image suggestions, max width of 2800 pixels, under 10 megabytes, and either a JPEG or a PNG. These are going to get you your best results, quickest loading times, which is important because attention spans are down and you don't want people sitting on your Behance pages waiting for it to load. So more technical requirements, things that are not required or I'm sorry, not um, compatible, PDFs, PSDs, doc files, things like that. So how this is going to work with your 1400 pixel wide image we are going to be able to see that in project view. But once you click on the project and you click it open, you can see that it will go up to 2800 pixels. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So as you can see here, Adobe says, you know, keep those file sizes under 10 megabytes. It's, it's going to load quicker. And if, you know, if you're doing a lot of vector stuff, you know, you're putting JPEGs in your file, you shouldn't have an issue with this. If you're using a ton of PSDs, you might get a, you know, a little bit of a higher file size, but we can fix that as well. And of course, RGB versus CMYK, you know, RGB is a color gamut for the web and CMYK is for print. So we're not really gonna worry about PDF uploads. And again, down here, there's just a, uh, you know, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of advice from Adobe that says, you know, hey, a couple little things that you can do to troubleshoot, but pretty much, uh, you know, going back over what we had just talked about. So now that you have your Behance account ready and this Adobe Illustrator template, let's go over this file. What we have here is something that it might look kind of like, you know, just a long Illustrator document, but it's actually broken up by artboards. So what this is going to do is just going to make it a lot easier when we go to export our images. So let's take a look at what we're going to end up with. So this is a project that I worked on probably a couple years ago. As you see here, spot for spot, I've got this hero image, I've got some text here, and this is just highlightable text. And then all of my images that go down the line, the different parts of the design and mock-ups and things like that. So if I go back here, we see the same thing. Hero image, description. As you can see, I put for placement only. So what that means is we're only using this just for a visual reference. It has some good information here for the you know font sizes for your header, 36 pixels, subheader, 20 pixels, and then paragraph text, 16 pixels. So I'm gonna kind of cheat this a little bit. I've got the you know the actual file that I used to create that, and as you can see here, I've got things hanging out of the artboard. When we go to export this, this, you know, all of those things are going to disappear essentially. So if you're not familiar with the artboard tools and the export process, you'll see that in just a minute. So I'm gonna take this logo, this master, this um, header logo that I've got here. I'm gonna just paste it in here. Just as if, you know, you had your own artwork file, you know, your your final copy of your logo and, you know, you're you're doing this yourself. As you can see, I've got this artboard here that's a little too short. If I, you know, I could do this, I could move this around or whatever, but just for the sake of this, you know, if you're not familiar with the artboard tool, I can adjust the size of this. Notice I just adjust the height, I did not adjust the width. So as you see, I've got a width here of 1400 pixels, just like we discussed earlier for Adobe's, you know, preferred, you know, dimensions there. So that's the one thing that, um, you know, the, the one way that we're gonna bring in our artwork, just copying and pasting it from your, your files here. So if I go to file and then export, I do export as, and I, we've got JPEG selected because I've been working on this a little bit, and I click use artboards. So now I could click, you know, one through three, I could do one comma four, whatever. I only wanna export this hero image, so I'm gonna click just number one and I already made this earlier, so I have it there. And these are our files, um, our you know file sizes. We're gonna do RGB because it's a screen. I do quality, larger file is 10, and then I'm doing this resolution at 150 PPI, which means that it's actually gonna make this a little bit bigger than you know your standard screen. And that's just, just because I wanna make sure that when this gets uploaded, it's not gonna get pixelated. So if I click okay, 
and I go to my finder and I click on what's saved, that's what I've got. So the other thing that we are going to do is just like I have it in here, and just for the fun of this, I'll you know I'll copy and paste some of this stuff down here, not these images. I don't want that. I just want kind of this mock-up part, just because I want to show you if you're not familiar with you know how to import you know just this mock-up kind of stuff here. And this I'm not going to worry about too much because it's you know this is just for example anyways. I'm not going to save this because this project is done. So if I go to my finder, I've got this folder here, this assets folder. And these are all those mockups that I did. They are on the original piece there. So I could just drag these over, put these right into Illustrator. And of course, you know, if I hold shift and option, I could scale that down proportionally. I could put those in. Let's do this one. Same thing, just you know, I'm not gonna take a ton of time just to um, you know just to put these together because it's you know the project's already done but you get an example of what's going on and so I know that these images are if I go to my links panel these should all be RGB just so you know that it's for web Adobe's gonna or Adobe Behance is you know they're going to convert these you know so you never know what's gonna happen so if you leave something in that you know CMYK it might not it's it's you know the conversion is never going to look 100% right to begin with but when you leave it up to somebody else you know the software rather you're you really don't know what you're going to get so if I X out of that and I click on my seventh artboard I know that this is my seventh artboard um, I'm just going to you know just double checking and then I'm going to go back to file export export as and then I'm going to do JPEG. I'm going to make sure that use artboards is selected. And since, you know, this is the only one that I added, I want to make sure that I'm just getting that number seven. You can do all of them. Like you could do your whole project and then export them all at the same time. No big deal. I'm just trying to do this just to, you know, give an example of the different things that go into this. So if I open this up a little bit and then let's see, mock up. Here we go that's the image that we just created and so it's simple as that really so the next thing that we're going to have to work on is getting these on Behance so now that I have all of my images saved I'm actually going to go to Behance.net and log in with the account that we created so I've got this button right over here on the right it says share your work then I'm going to click on project and you get a number of different options that you could do here but you know just to get the bare bones down we are just going to click on this add image button and you can actually add these all in at one time by selecting by highlighting and selecting all of them so if I click open it takes just a second here and I notice that you know everything is out of whack it's not in the right order so if I click on this pencil over here if I hover over any of these images click on this pencil I can reorder this project and this, you know, this might, uh, might, might come in handy to have Illustrator open, but since I kind of know what this project looks like, I already did it before, I don't, I don't really have to do that. So, I'm just going to fix this up just a little bit. This goes up here, typography study, color study, final project and mock-up. So, as you see here, I actually... Uh, exported a blank JPEG so I'll show you how to get rid of these things as well so I click Save New Order everything's looking as it should but now if I hover over this it'll bring up that blue box again if I click on the little pencil I can just delete this image so you kind of have to do that like one by one I don't know of a better way to like you know if you had a, too many images in there and you need to delete them um, you pretty much have to do it one by one so be mindful of that so the next thing that I want to do because I made this a seamless um, project here I'm going to click on the styles button and you see content spacing you can do uh, zero pixels so now if you look at that everything lines up the way that it should except I think these are out of order so just for the sake of this let me put that up there save new order and now they're lining up and everything is just like it should be so that's pretty much it for adding media as you can see you have all these other options here um, like I said earlier what we are going to need to do we're gonna add some text 
and I'm going to put project name. You can change all the different uh, you know preferences here. You can make this bold. You can change this to a, uh, a header and not a paragraph. You can do some stuff about the project. Change that to paragraph. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, again, you can add just different things, embeds, videos, even uh, XD prototypes, even though, you know, at this point, we don't know how long they're going to keep XD for, regardless, you know, it's Figma, buyout, and all that kind of thing. So let's reorder this project. Go back up there. And now, you know, again, we could add some more text to this all about your project. You can, you can move that around if you wanted to. You know, reorder project if you decided you wanted to put it there. But just keep in mind that this is linear. You cannot layer things. You cannot, you know, put one image over a text or a text over an image, whatever. So just keep in mind that it's, it's a very basic, like, editing system. So now the last thing we have to do is add some tags so we can find your work. So if you haven't already, you can give this project a title. And now here's where we have to add a few tags. Graphic design, COD, that is one. You need that one. Portfolio, SP24, or whatever year you might be taking portfolio. I'll probably do a new video, but you know, this year it's two, it's 24. So the next thing that you'll need is the course name and faculty last name. So we could do, let's see, graphic design three, it already pops up. Graphic design three, Wadwa. So from there, we can add other different tags that, you know, aren't totally relevant to what we're doing, but, you know, it's good if you're trying to get found down the road. So I just clicked on graphic design, let's do advertising, whatever, you know, whatever kind of um, medium that your project encompasses, you can add more of those. So we want it set to everyone for visibility so everybody can see it. And then the one last thing that we do have to do is add a co-owner. So right here, if you type in graphic design, COD, oh, should populate right here and then we add that and now we're if we hit done so with all of our tags set we want to do one more thing and if i go back down here to add co-owners credits and more we'll see that we have our co-owners on this but then we want to go to discoverability so right here we have this little text input that has companies brands and schools and we just want to add college of dupage so if I type that up, it will start populating, and there it is. So I click on College of the Page, and the reason that we're doing this is because it's going to help other people find your work. They might hear, oh, I've heard the graphic design students at College of the Page are pretty good. Let me see if I can find some more people from that school, because outside of that, you know, with these tags added, we're also going to be able to find you, you know, essentially through Google. Your, your, your Behance might populate a little bit nicer if say somebody's looking for a packaging project or you know whatever it may be the tags that you used you know that it's only going to help you in the long run to you know better get discovered in our case we should probably publish it because we want this to show up on our behance so now the project is live if i go to and i'm going to have two of these now because i already did this project but if i go to my main behance page now it's the last one that the first one that shows up as I said, I did this project already, but you know, just for the sake of walking that through, that's really uh, all there is to it. If you have any questions, let us know.